Hello everyone and Annyeong Haseyo. My name is Philip and welcome to our next science talk. Today we're going to talk about the scanning tunneling microscope. We're watching the Nobel Prize announcements live from Stockholm. Oh, the Nobel! <laughs> yeah. What would you do if you won a Nobel Prize? Would you simply call your mother or celebrate with all your science friends? Well, these are Gerd Billig and Heinrich Rohrer, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1986. And here are the two, only a couple of hours after the announcement, enjoying a nice game of soccer. So, what actually happened here? Well, they first had a press conference, but soon asked everyone to please leave because both were members of the IBM Zurich Laboratory soccer team and they had a game scheduled against Dow Chemicals. You know, priorities. And of course they lost that day, but they got a Nobel instead. The object in the middle is the microscope they actually got the Nobel Prize for, the scanning tunneling microscope, which allowed scientists to create images of atoms. Here you see one of the first images they took using that microscope, showing the surface of a silicon crystal, an important material for electronic devices. Each white dot marks the position of an atom here. So how does it work? As we've discussed in our last science talk, it is a little bit like reading braille, but instead of using fingers, scientists use a needle, a very, very sharp metal tip that scans the surface with atomic precision. But not only that, the tip can also be used to pick up objects from the surface and move them around, and in that way, assemble artificial structures made of atoms. What the microscope actually measures is a bit tricky. Essentially, it detects an electric current, electrons flowing from the sample to the tip or vice versa. But there is a catch. Between tip and sample, there's a tiny gap so that they don't touch. And Electrons cannot move across this gap. It is like a hill for them that they cannot pass because they simply do not have enough energy. But according to quantum mechanics, the laws of physics on a very small scale, electrons can actually pass through the hill. They tunnel across the gap, but that actually works only with a certain probability. This effect is literally known as quantum tunneling. And it is why um, our microscope is called the scanning tunneling microscope. Quantum tunneling seems insanely weird, but it is actually very important uh, for different mechanisms all around us. For example, it allows the sun to shine by promoting nuclear fusion. Nuclear. It's pronounced nuclear. Since this tunneling current is very sensitive to the distance between, sample and tip, it is perfect to sense small variations in height, such as an atom. If one now simply records the position of the tip for constant tunneling current, one can create a height profile of the surface. And scientists have used that to image and create amazing things on the atomic scale. Because we are running out of time, here is now a selection of my favorite works. The surface of gold, the surface of samarium hexaboride, of platinum, of niobium disilinite, of oxidized tantalum that actually looks like tic-tac-toe, a magnetic bit made of only 12 atoms, a whole sentence written with indentations in copper oxide, small molecules, large molecules, many molecules, Sapinski triangles, a movie made with single atoms, quasi crystals, carbon nanotubes, electron waves on copper, copper nitride islands topped with atoms, a defect in gallium arsenide, defects in tungsten ditellaride that actually look like TIE fighters, and not only Star Wars, here is also Star Trek written with single atoms. Did I just learn something new and have fun doing it? What? <laughs> if you want to learn more about these scientific works, we provide additional links in the description box. For now, that's all folks. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. My name is Philip and see you in the next episode of Science Talk.